And I was like, I'm pretty sure, but I'm not 100% sure. So awesome sauce. Let me see if I can share my screen. Ah, perfect. Okay. Hi, Caroline. How are you doing? Hi, everybody. I know a few people are going to just kind of pop into the chat. Um, so as you're coming in, hi, Bianca. Hi, Anasha. Hi, Annette. Hi, all my friends are here. Um, so as you guys are coming in, just, you know, uh, say hi. Tell me who you are. Tell me what type of law firm you have, um, your practice area, because uh, that will help me as I'm sharing with you all about how. Hey, Devon. Hi. Um, you know, if I'm a trademark lawyer and a creative business lawyer, but I know that some people who could, you know, any lawyer really could. Hi, Timmy. How are you doing? Um, we emailed you back. Uh, <laughs> FYI. Um, if, if you're the same Timmy, I think you are. Um, but uh What's really cool about this platform, um, and I've been using Dubsado for about three years now. Um, I just navigated away from traditional legal software, and I wanted to have something that could benefit me as a solo. Uh, I didn't have a lot of money <laughs> when I started my law firm. I was really bootstrapping, and you know, with Clio and um, some other the alternatives out there, I just could not afford it. And so I was able to find Dubsado um, by some of my clients and a business coach, and I have been hooked ever since. So awesome. So we have a lot of people coming in. Uh, Aiden Durham, business and branding lawyer from Colorado. Okay. We have a business formation and recently trademark practice in Dallas at Saluto. Um, Saluto, excuse me. Um, Australian lawyer, virtual legal business, Bianca Brazen Legal Immigration Law Firm in Boston. Okay. <laughs> You say you're sending your response. Awesome. So I know that we're going to have a lot of friends show up today. And really, my job today is just to share with you all how I used Dubsado as a lawyer. Um, I love, love, love Dubsado. I'm a huge fan of it. Um, and uh, as a trademark attorney um, and creative business attorney, I find that my clients appreciate the seamlessness of the actual back end. Um, if you are working with experts, entrepreneurs, advanced level business owners, they are fans of systems and systems will actually give people security. Um, so if your systems are clunky, if they're misfiring, if they're even not aesthetically pleasing, um, it can make your clients not feel very comfortable. And as we as lawyers know, we want people to feel comfortable comfortable from their first contact with us. And so sometimes having some archaic systems or those that don't really um, benefit us well, um, that could be to our detriment. And so I just want to share with you a few ways um, that I can use Dubsado. Um, and if the Dubsado team, um, uh, if the Dubsado team uh, wants me to highlight anything, um, if you guys are saying, hey, Decora, you know, um, make sure you show them this or that. Um, then um, I'm happy to do that as well. Um, so I want to show you all how I used Dubsado as a lawyer. Um, and so I'm going to be doing a lot of screen sharing and um, kind of sharing with you all the things that I do um, with this amazing, amazing tool. Um, so the very first thing that I'll say is that one of the ways in which I use Dubsado is I'm using it in my lead capture. Um, and so if a prospective client reaches out to me on Instagram or Facebook, which are my two primary channels where I'm getting prospective clients, um, I'm directing them towards my website, which has an embedded Dubsado form. And so this embedded Dubsado form uh, is able to capture their information. And so I'm going to share with you the two different ways in which how this looks on my website. Um, and how you can use it as well. So I'm going to share my screen starting now. Hopefully you guys can, I'm gonna do this. Hopefully you guys can see that. So I can't see, oh, okay, my screen is sharing. Okay, awesome. <laughs> I wonder if I could have just shared a window. Let me stop, switch, let me, let me stop sharing really quick. Let me see if I need to share something else. Yeah, that makes my life better. I'm just going to share my application window. I like that. So this is my website. Some of you, hi, Rookie. Hi, Mindy. Uh, so this is my website, and some of you all have probably been on it, uh, <laughs> some of my mentees. Um, and so this is where I'm directing most traffic. 
Um, and so you can see this website, you know, the creator's lawyers and social proof. But where my Dubsado form is, is if you navigate down to, this is a pop-up window I click out of, um, you can uh, navigate down to my contact pane. And if you click book a call, this form pops up. Now this website is housed in Show It, um, but I've also used my Dubsado lead capture form on a WordPress website, Squarespace website, different iterations of different hosting platforms that I've used throughout the years. But for 2020 to Cora, we are on Show It. Um, and so this is my Dubsado lead capture form. And so this form is where um, the client uh, prospect can enter their first name, last name, phone, email, IG handle, um, uh, how do they hear? Um, I like to capture information like how do they hear about me, right? Were they referred by some of the attorneys on my team? Were they referred by friend? Was it Facebook? Was it a conference or retreat or did they hear me on a podcast? I like to capture this data, which is also displayed in the Dubsado um, dashboard because it allows me to see where are all of my prospective clients coming from. Because if I see that most of my clients are coming from one potential source, I should ramp up my marketing there. Um, um, I like to capture what are they interested in? How can they work with me to, um, how would you like to work with us to protect your smarts? Um, and these questions can be customized um, based on the Dubsado dashboard. And then I also like to see, you know, how soon are they looking to get started? I love to capture that IG handle. A secret of mine <laughs> that I use is I capture the prospect's Instagram handle. I save them. Well, someone on my team saves them to a uh, collection folder on Instagram. And during my downtime, if a client has not booked a call, I'll go in and I'll interact with their profile. I'll make comments, um, you know, like their things. And I've, it's actually turned clients um, into sales or, or into them booking and hiring the firm um, just from that sheer interaction. So I like to use the Dubsado form to capture their social media handles because it makes it a great way for me to circle back and connect with those clients. Um, or those prospective clients. Um, I've also, um, what I used to use, <laughs> uh, this is my Instagram profile and uh, I have uh, tacoradavis.com slash links. And so there's some different links that I have. I am having a trademark party tonight. You all are invited if you want to come. Um, but people can say, you know, oh, I, I want to buy your book. I wrote a book. They want to buy contract templates. They want to go to the website. Or if it says, I'm ready to protect my brand, it will take them to this just kind of standalone page that does have pretty much the same type of the upside form. I think it's just slightly different embedded here on this page from people who come from Instagram. So I'm able to kind of see, um, you know, basically give them another means to submit their information because someone may not want to scroll through a long website or I really don't want to send people to a website. I'd rather give them the booking page from Instagram. And so these are the two ways in which I'm capturing leads. And I'm also utilizing Dubsado to gain data that I can use in my firm in terms of marketing, interacting with clients. There's a statistic that says that um, your prospective clients need to uh, interact with you. Um, I think they need to see or have a touch point with you about seven times before, 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 before they are ready to, um, they're ready to purchase from you, book you, you know, invest in your services. And so one of the reasons why I capture that IG handle is because that's another means for me to stay at top of mind. Um, so that's that. Another thing that we do um, is we are using Flowdesk, which is another third party email marketing tool. And so when I have prospective leads that come through Dubsado, it's automatically synced with Flowdesk. And then I have a follow up email sequence that is sent to all of those leads that have not actually booked a call with me. I think in Jul June, I had 42 discovery calls, just me, 42 discovery calls, but I had about 90 95 leads that did not book, right? So I'm like, oh my goodness, that's all those people that I was not following up with. Um, and so, you know, there's 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 fortune in the follow-up. <laughs> so you want to make sure that, you know, you're using Dubsado and any other tool that it can link with because now they have the availability to link with Zapier, which is great. Um, so just a little tip there. Um, so we're going to navigate 
Um, also, really into the back end of Dubsado, um, I want to show you guys a couple of things as well about the some of the workflows that I have set up. And if you guys are not aware of what a workflow is, um, so a workflow, which is my first time hearing about this from Dubsado, was um, basically a workflow is an iteration of steps that could possibly be automated. Um, and they are triggered based on a previous action. Um, and so, um, you know, it's it's kind of like a automated checklist. That's kind of like how I think of it. So you can see when you log into Dubsado and you go down to templates and you click forms, you can see that there's forms for contracts, sub agreements, questionnaires, uh, proposals, and lead capture. And if you see right here, we have our 2020 inquiry for Instagram. I mean, I think I updated that one for July 2020. This is what's on the web. This is what's on Instagram, that Instagram page. This one's on the website. I like to try to play around with some stuff. So I just have two lead capture forms, but they're all linked to the same workflow. And so you might say, what the heck is a workflow? <laughs> Again, it is a series of automations that can be set up and triggered based on what someone does. So anytime a client completes my lead capture form, this workflow is activated. And this client will be sent an email inviting them to schedule a discovery call with me. Um, the project status, we have created a step that will change their project status. And I think it's saying like, you know, lead follow up, waiting for them to book or a call not booked. Um, and then we create a to do. And this is where someone on my team, we have created a to do for my team member to log into my Instagram on creators law firm. And they will go and they will follow the client and then they will also save them to the form. So I'm not even doing it. Uh, I have somebody else do it for me. And then uh, there is a internal discovery call form that can be sent as well. Um, what's nice about some of these steps is that they can uh, be uh, done automatically or it can be set for you to approve, right? And so um, you can set that um, this, this um, form is only going to send to the client once something happens. So you can say, wow, I'm gonna build this workflow but I'm not exactly sure if I want to send this email to the client until something happens. And you may have to build in like a manual step. You can do that and utilize this approval option. And so I do this a lot of times with my trademark workflows when we are in that um, stage between the examiner, the examiners looking at the application as opposed to giving them a notice of publication. I don't know what's going to happen. So I can't automate that because I have to wait to see what the examiner says. But I still build that email in, for the client into the workflow. And once it's done, my team can go in, schedule it and approve that email to send. Um, and so, again, there's different workflows that we have. I probably have every time I show my mentees who are like in trademark and business attorneys, they're like, Takora, can you just sell me this system? <laughs> that you put together, I've like probably made me around, I've broken down my trademark process and I think into probably around 10 or 11 workflows based on what's happening. And that also includes office actions. I can't get into everything today, but it's really powerful what we can do. One thing I do want to show you though, is how we follow up with prospective clients um, and pulling up my 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 workflow where um, just kind of showing you how I send a proposal and everything. All right, all right, all right. And if you guys have questions, ask, ask, ask away as I'm pulling things up. Let's see. Happy to answer them. Hi, Kim. All right. All right. So here is how I used Upsado to send proposals. This is like, just gives me the goosebumps because it's just so good. <laughs> so this is a test client myself. And um, when I send a proposal to a client, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. It looks like this. Uh, another cool thing too, and I'll just, I'm kind of jumping all around, but you guys will be all right. Um, Dubsado has an internal portal as well. And so the client can have their own private portal 
and the client can log into your portal, their portal, um, with whatever email or password that they have. And this is the back end of my portal. So my hold up saddle is just branded, okay? So because I want them to feel they're in the same place no matter where they go. Um, so you can see outstanding invoices if you utilize Dubsado for invoicing. How many unread emails, right? Incomplete forms, open invoices, case resources. So these could be forms and things that you've uploaded, um, documents. And then they can also see any emails that they miss. And they say, oh, my gosh, I, I missed an email. Right. And so when someone uh, when we send a proposal, this is the email that I send to clients for the proposal it says, hey, thank you so much for the time we spent on your call. I'm so excited. I love that I'm able to infuse my love of GIFs into all of my emails. So I have tons of GIFs embedded into my emails end up side of um, and we link to this proposal. Um, and then below the proposal, we give them some steps. So we'll say step one, complete it, uh, the proposal. Step two, sign the contract. Step three, remit payment for your invoice. And so once they click this, this is taking them to the proposal for legal services. And I send this proposal for those who are interested in our trademark legal services. And so you can have multiple proposals that are kind of queued. Um, up. I give a nice little greeting to people. I used to have a video, a welcome video, but I removed that. But you can pop that back in there if you want, welcoming people. Um, you can also embed GIFs into this form. So as you can see, this is kind of scrolling and cycling. Um, so I'm reiterating to them, these are my goals for you. You know, my goals are one, to do this, two, to do that, and then three, to do something else, right? Um, and then I iterate, reiterate my process. So this is just another way to make someone feel like, wow, this is like next level stuff. <laughs> I'm ready. I know exactly what's about to happen. Book your trademark services. We conduct a search. We file your app. You know, we try to kind of give an overview of the process. Here's another GIF of my client testimonials that we infuse in here. Um, and then they can choose their package. Um, it's, you know, 1500 for a trademark search or 1500 for a trademark filing. They can select as much as they want. If they want to do a monthly legal subscription, they can select that, you know, they can deselect. Um, so I have some legal subscriptions that start at 190 a month. They go all the way up to 3K a month. Right. And so it just depends on what it is that they want. So let's just say that they are just interested in my trademark search and trademark filing. What's cool about these things right here is these are actual packages, legal packages that um, or just service packages that you can build into the back end of Dubsado so that when the client clicks these packages, you'll see what happens in my contract. Um, another thing that I like to reiterate, just so you know, uh, procedural, uh, you know, I talk about the procedural office actions and stuff like that. Um, so I should pull this up in it. I'm going to pull this up in the incognito window so I can. Maybe I can. Yeah. Awesome sauce. Let me pull this back in here. Oh. I lost you guys on the share. I'm going to pull it up so you can see, see something else. Mindy says, Rookie says, does Zapier work for law pay? I don't. I don't link, link Dubsado to law pay. Um, I don't know if a Zap can work. I use something else and I can show you guys that. Um, Many says, so if I have a contract and invoice, I can package them together as proposal in one email. Yeah, you can basically um, and I'll go back and, uh, and I'll show you what you can do. I, it's something that I don't do just from my own strategic reasons and how I run this shebang. But you all should be able to see. Yes. OK, so here's the proposal. If you look at the top. When they click the link to open up the proposal, at the top it says proposal, then it also says contract. If you also want to have a third link, which is the invoice, it can be there too. So it could literally be every step the client needs to take. They could view the proposal and accept it. So let's do that now. Oh, it's not working. Anyway, I think it's just having some difficulty because if, if I was someone else, I think it knows, obviously, the Dubsado knows that I'm the administrator, so I can't accept the proposal. But normally there would be a button down here for um, the client to accept. 
Um, and then the next thing that would happen is it would, um, once they submitted the proposal, it would click to my contract. And then my legal contract is here. Okay, good. This is what I want you guys to see. So instead of me having to redo contracts over and over and over again, oh, um, I realized why now it wasn't accepting it. It's because I think I've used this one before. But anyway, so let's say, let's just assume that I had my chief brand counsel legal subscription here. Um, the client can see what the project or what it is, the services that they're hiring me for, the description of those services, how many of them, and then the subtotal. So you can embed that into the contract. I like doing that because it's very clear, one, what the client is getting, how much of the service, what is entailed in the total cost. Um, and so you can even put a button in here if you want to say, here's the total amount due, um, and then a copyright registration, right? Um, I also uh, infuse in here, making the client <laughs> acknowledge my social media policy. Don't email me about what's going on with your case on Facebook. Um, uh, them acknowledging my fee schedule, you know, um, that type of stuff. And then them being able to sign the contract, you give me some additional information and whatnot. And so um, that's, and, and again, if you want to use, if you like to accept payments through PayPal or Stripe, which is, inter or even QuickBooks, which is integrated with Dubsado, you can have a third um, kind of, uh, I guess, uh, option right after this that will link to the invoice. So that is certainly a possibility if that's what you would like to do. Um, I don't do that. I link directly to uh, LawPay, which a lot of attorneys use. I can't wait for Dubsado to integrate with LawPay. It's just going to change my entire life and everybody else's. Uh, let's see. Radian said, did you hire someone to set up Dubsado automation sequences? Uh, Rookie, I did not hire, just to clarify, yes, I did. I've hired a few people. Um, so the first person that I hired was Jordan Gill in 2017 to kind of get me set up. Um, but Jordan kind of just set up my email. She didn't make anything look beautiful like this. Now, um, Crystal Clark Creative is the one who was responsible for the beauty that you all are seeing today. Um, um, and she she went through and she really really took what we what I had built because after I saw what Jordan did I said oh well, I can just keep doing that myself and so I'm the one who set up like I'm the one who's created all my emails um created the emails for like trademark maintenance office actions um business formation contracts publication phase like all those workflows I did that so Crystal Clark um she wouldn't know how to do that because she is not a lawyer and she really just looked at what I already had and kind of revamped it. So now in terms of the automations, yes, she did a lot of that stuff. I also have an internal team member. Um, her name is Ashley. And she's Ashley's about to start freelancing and doing this stuff too. So if anybody was interested in that, let us know. Um, but she's doing that as well. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, I was I was trying to do that, Mimi, do the incognito window, but I think because I'd already done this before, it was kind of messing up. Uh, do I offer payment plans? Yes. Generally, it's like you pay me fifteen hundred dollars to do a trademark search, and then you pay me fifteen to do a filing. And that's the payment plan. <laughs> and sometimes I do. Um, my subscriptions are monthly, and I'll set that up in the back end in Law Pay. And so, so I. I do not link Dubsado to LawPay, but I'm happy that you all are asking that because I think Dubsado should hear this feedback that a lot of attorneys love to use LawPay and we would love to have Dubsado linked with LawPay. I think that would help us to have a more seamless experience. Um, and we love LawPay because the credit card processing rate is 1.76%. Also, other people who are not attorneys can also use LawPay. So I've seen like accountants use it and even the people who print my book my book publisher uses law pay, which is crazy. Um, so yeah, let's see. Well, Radiance, you need to let me know how your law pay integrated law. How did your VA integrate law pay with Dubsado? Because I love to know unless it was like via Zap. Now, if it was via Zap, then hey, what I do is I put into my proposal email, we link it, we hyperlink, um, uh, I use something called invoiced.com, which links to LawPay, which is able to set up like payment plans and stuff like that. Um, and it's really nice. So, yeah. 
So let's keep going because we are rocking and rolling. So I, let me see. So that's kind of like how we do the proposal process. Another thing that I really like that we do, and I'll just kind of show you guys. Um, we have this um, client guide that we send out as well from Dubsado. It's really nice because um, uh, another thing too, like this, this right here where I'm at is like each client has like their own kind of project window based upon the services that you're providing to them. So I have clients who I may have like, you know, 10 projects because they have multiple trademarks. So um, this one is just, you know, your projects can be here. Um, and from here, you're able to navigate to a lot of stuff. You're able to attach the, the contract so you can view the contract that the client has signed or that you've attached here. There's different tags that we use to indicate what what kind of a uh, a space is this particular trademark in? Is it in the trademark search phase? Is it an office action phase? Um, what is the project status? You know, so we can change that to say, hey, they they inquired, but they didn't book a call or we're awaiting the call in the console or the proposal in the contract was sent. A lot of this stuff is, is automatically applied because it's easy for me to say, how many clients do we have waiting for trademark search results? How many clients do we have how many leads came in and they didn't book a call? Like we can easily tell that by how we have queued it up on the back end. Another thing is that me and my team, we're constantly improving our workflows. Every 90 days, we have something called a biz demo day where we literally will look at something that's wrong with the business, tear it down and build it back up. So we're always perfecting these workflows um, at all times. Um, so I, I like having the project status here. You can customize the client by clicking this button. You can add a picture of the client. You can add their social media handles, website, Pinterest, their address, the business address, any alternative co contacts, um, shipping address. And then we have some custom map fields. My team does something with the custom map fields. I don't know. Um, this is also where you can see the Instagram handle. Oh, I think we've, uh, oh, Crystal set up a custom project fields for the Instagram handle. And so it'll automatically pull right there. Then you can also see the referral source here. So we know the referral source for this client was Instagram. And what's cool is if I have multiple team members and I'm like, you can you can set up the Asado where you have team members and they only have access to certain elements of Dubsado. So you may not want them to see like you know, your invoices or how much money you've made. Um, and so you can say, okay, well, I want, you know, I want Victoria assigned here, um, you know, and you can actually assign a team member or a VA to a particular client and they don't have access to everything else, but just that one client that they're working on. Yeah, okay. So another thing that I used up side of for is to send my client guide. Um, Uh-oh. So this is what we send. Um, we will have them sign the contract. We will have them, uh, yeah, they accept the proposal, sign the contract, submit payment, and then we invite them to an intake call. Uh, so we don't send out all legal forms and stuff like that. We call our clients and then we complete the form for them because nine times out of 10, we know what we're looking for. And my team has already completed the, intake call pretty much they're just gathering some information so um, once that's done we then send out this trademark client guide it's really nice because you know um here's some case resources you know here's my team i need to add another team member here but i want them to know who's who is sending them emails so they're not like what the heck is happening who are these people you know what are their titles right and getting to put a face with a name um I want to hear more about them. So this is where I'm grabbing information from them. I want to know some fun facts. What are their favorite like Starbucks orders and stuff? I have some branded Starbucks cards. I don't have them on hand. They're around here somewhere, but um, I have it where it's a Starbucks gift card and it has my law firm logo on it. It looks like a business card, but it's a Starbucks gift card. And so I handwrite my clients notes and I send them those gift cards in the mail, but I'm capturing that information based on this client guide when they complete it. 
Um, I reiterate my communication policies, you know, responses from our team, contacting our team, reiterating that social media policy. Yes, they initialed it, but I'm bringing it to their attention again. What are our observed holidays? Um, I need to add Juneteenth here. Um, so that's not here. And then giving them access to their client portal again. And then reiterating the process so they know what happens next. And then once they go all the way down and see this, they can click send. And when they cl click send, one of my team members knows, well, let me capture this address and put it on this Excel file for Attorney Davis when she's when I have my CEO time every week where I'm doing um, different things to really push the business forward. I'm actually writing my notes during that time in terms of, you know, client thank you notes. Thank you for trusting us. Those little little steps really will will help you stand out from other people um another thing that we do uh let's see if it's here so i'm going to delete this this is one of the cool things i'm showing you all my secrets but it's fine um so here is my trademark opinion letter and i'm going to pop back in just to see just to see if anybody's got questions let me see Mm. Bianca says, is the law pay link you use for invoicing the standard generic one versus B no, it, it's something totally different. Let me show you guys what I do <laughs> because it's kind of hard to explain. So I use this company called Invoiced. Um, I like it. It's a hundred dollars a month, but I like it a lot and um, it links with LawPay. So this is invoiced.com. This is what it's called, invoiced.com. It integrates with LawPay. I love it because um, it's easy for me to set up clients, uh, payment plans, long-term, short-term, a higher level subscription that I'm totally not going to get into. It's like $500 a month, which I'm not doing that. You can actually have subscriptions come out on a monthly basis, but I can do that on the back end in law pay. Um, and uh, I take, I will create an invoice in invoiced <laughs> and I will in that body of the email that we send to the, the client. It's like step one, do the accept the proposal. Step two, sign the contract. Step three, click here to remit payment. They will click that link and it will take them to the invoice. So that's what I do. I just put my invoice link from invoice.com into an email that I send to the client. And then I tell the client on a discovery call, this is what you can expect to happen next. You're gonna get an email. And in that email, it's gonna be a link to your proposal, but pay special attention to those steps because everything you need is within that one email and they get it right almost every time. So yeah, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, yeah. I see Radiance, Radiance is doing something. Uh, thanks, Bianca. Okay, so I'm going to show you my trademark opinion letter. This is super dope. Uh, so, so this is my trademark opinion letter. Uh, and so, uh, if you take in Sonya's two weeks to trademarks course, it may look familiar, but Sonya told me that I've like put Botox in this thing. And so she was like, I put Botox and fillers into it and it's like jazzed up. But anyway, this is the standard trademark opinion letter template that I've used. And so my team who I don't, I sometimes do trademark searches now, but you know, when I need to, um, but mainly my team is able to come in, they can customize um, the, the, the trademark subject um, headline, um, which is, which is kind of like if, if we go back into this part where you can edit it, what I tell them is 2020 trademark opinion letter, delete this. Uh, well, I, 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 let me show you guys something else <laughs> really quick. I'm like, I'm showing you so much, but um, uh, I want to show you how I utilize systems. So what happens if you want to scale a law firm, not only do you need really good software, but you really need good, good SOPs and you got to help people help you. And I mean, I knew when I started my firm, I said, I want to have 
other people working for me. So let me see. Okay, here we go. Try not to share. Let's see if I can do it so that my, my client stuff isn't showing. Uh, all right, so here's what I do. Oh gosh. Where is my, here we go. All right. Yeah, I'm always working on drafting my SOPs. I just feel like it just never ends. So <laughs> um, let me just do my entire screen this time. Uh, here we go. No wonder I couldn't find it. All right, just kidding. Let me stop my screen share. So here's what I do, because you guys might be like, well, how the heck are you telling people to do this stuff? Like, how are you helping your team help you? Uh, we use Trello. Some people use ClickUp. Uh, let me see. But I like to use Trello. And in Trello, uh, I'm able to, um, we have a Trademark Matters board. And uh, if you can see right here, um, this is just a sample card. And so here is like, I have all the steps laid out for my team to know how to do an opinion letter. This is all the steps it's gonna take for them to do the opinion letter according to my standards, right? So I operate with a spirit of excellence. So I'm like, you know, you have to as well, but I'm gonna help them, right? So I'm telling them every single step, Download the search report, log into Dubsado, click the forms tab, click add a new form, select the option to upload the new PDF. I'm telling them every single step they need to take to complete this opinion form, how I want it to be done. Um, and so that's how I'm instructing people to support me. Um, let's see. Yes. And so based on that, I'm going to take you guys back into the opinion letter. So what, what what I used to do, and Crystal Clark just changed my life with this option. You know, I didn't even think about it. And she's fantastic. She's really stellar at systems. And I know she's um, always in communication with folks at Dubsado. But, um, you know, we can, you can kind of come in here and you can customize, you know, the trademark uh, opinion letter and whatnot. Um, but, oh, my team did something. My team did something new. I'm like, oh, who added this button? I, I didn't add it, but anyway. So what can be done, uh, and I'm just kind of going back in, this is just kind of a preview of the form, is here, what I like to do is I can say, I do or do not recommend you move forward with this trademark. And if they do, how many classes do I recommend they move forward in? Um, also, what is the additional fee if they're gonna move forward in additional classes? And then, I, uh, again, I used to send this, all this stuff by email, but now I utilize the Dubsado questionnaire or the Dubsado subagreement, I think, maybe. Um, and they say, how would you like to proceed? Um, yes, I'd like to proceed with filing my trademark. Before I make a decision, I'd like to schedule a review call with Attorney Davis. They can select that, and then they can click here. It'll take them to my calendar. Go ahead, Ashley. Sorry. That's just my IP docketing manager doing it. I love it, love it, love it. So. So they can schedule with anybody available or they can schedule with Ashley, me, LaVon, or Anya should be added to this. Well, she's not added to this one. So that's really cool. They're able to set, schedule an opinion letter review right here. Um, another thing is if they don't want to do that, they can. we will customize this checkbox right here and they'll say, okay, I want to move forward in all these classes. I want to move forward in all classes. Do they have any questions for me? Yes, no. And then they can click this. Uh, Dubsado, I don't know if there's a way that I can change the name of this form or change the name of this button, but I would love it. But anyway, it says countersign should just say submit but i think it's because it's a sub agreement but anyway um so that's how i sent out my opinion letters and let me tell you it's changed everything because i was doing all this back and forth with people via email you know and it's like tell me what you want to do ask me all the questions in the form it's there right um and we do something super similar with the draft trademark form crystal didn't build this one for me i built it myself um Let's see, is this the one that I, 
Yeah. So as you can see from this one, so that was the opinion letter I just showed you guys. I also send my draft trademarks very similarly. Um, and they can pre they can click this link. It will open up to whatever draft trademark that I've uploaded to the back end of Dubsado. Um, and then they can say, how would you like to proceed? I like to proceed with filing this mark before I make a decision. I like clarity concerning my application. Um, then what I love is I was like, they, I need to have something where it's on record that I'm telling you that if you're filing an intent to use trademark application, we will have to file a statement of use showing proof that you started to use your trademark in the next nine to 15 months. And when you do that, you're going to pay me an additional $500 plus whatever $100 of trademark filing fee per class. Yes, I understand and consent to filing the trademark application once approved. No, I do not understand and would like to speak with a member of the creator's law firm team. Then they can ask me questions, right? So I'm utilizing the, the forms you know, to really streamline the process and make the client experience 10 times better and making it easier on my team. Glenessa said, what calendar are you using? I was using Dubsado, but now that I have, after next week, it'll be four employees, so it'll be five Dubsado. Whenever you guys fix this, I would love that. It, it would be great to be able to use, utilize um, Dubsado for calendars, but I think you can only do one person at a time. And that just doesn't work for us with how fast we're growing. So we use Acuity. Um, and so we just link to Acuity. But what's cool is that you can use a Zap to link Acuity and Dubsado. So we do that as well. Um, so that's something you could do. Uh, and then, of course, we have... Um, I, based upon how the client, um, what the client does, um, you know, if they file, let's say, for instance, um, we have filed their trademark application. Now we have to notify the client. What you'll do is you'll go to your workflows column. And this is where you can apply all of those pre mapped out workflow steps. So um, I have a couple different ones applied here. But. Um, you know, if it's like, OK, I have a trademark workflow for if they filed a use space trademark. Excuse me. I have a workflow. If they file a use space trademark or if they file an intent to use space trademark. Right. And so um, here's the to do list archive, you know, any previous workflow, add the tag trademark filing, change that project status, create, you know, all this other type of stuff. Um, and then they can. Uh, be sent an email that says trademark application filed. The reason why this is not all checked off is just because um, this is just a test case. <laughs> uh, but I was playing around with some stuff. But um, when I send a client an email that says that, um, you know, they, we filed their trademark, I put a custom GIF in here that says, you know, pop the confetti. So if you guys follow me on social media, one of the things that I do is I celebrate my clients when they have a successful trademark. And so this is also on brand, like pop the confetti, we filed the trademark application, you know, and uh, what are the next steps, you know, now do a happy dance. This is a major boss move. This is a celebration, right? So they need to get excited. They need to do a little dance, you know, they need to do whatever. So we're doing those things, having those touch points. Um, and we also use the workflows to be able to communicate with the client throughout the process. As you all know, if you are a trademark attorney, copyright, IP attorney, the process is very long when it comes to the service cycle. So me knowing that, I knew because the process was long that the client truly needed to have a seamless experience. So every single step of the way, they need to get an update. I know some attorneys don't update their clients for like two, three, four months until they hear from the examiner, not me. I'm going to make sure that I'm utilizing the workflows to be able to, you know, constantly be top of mind for the client, help them out, warn them about different things, right? Show them and serve them. You know, and that's why clients love just they come back and they refer people because they say, gosh, your systems are amazing. They're, you know, but I'm utilizing Dubsado for a lot of them. Um, and then, of course, um, you know, integrating it with some other supportive uh, software. Let me see. Oh, this is something new that I just started doing. Really excited. So 
I will show you guys. Uh, where is this at? So another thing is that if you're going to be like me or anybody else and you celebrate your client's accomplishments, one of the things um, that I that I use is and a, and a good thing you know and i've learned this from some of my business coaches you might say well i'm not a trademark lawyer so this isn't going to work for me yes it will <laughs> it, it, it works if you work it right so um it will work if you work it and um what's cool about it is you have to look at someone else's process and say what can i take from that and use it in my own dubsado system or my own workflows to work for me um and so just be of that mind. And I have a very, you know, a different process for my subscription clients. And I'm going to have Crystal come back in and help me next month with that. Uh, so this is what I'm doing now. So once the trademark application is published and we get through the publication period, that first 30 days, we'll then send out this form. And this is where we say, let's get time to have a trademark party. You know, this is your trademark celebration form. So it's time for a trademark party. Here, let me look at this, save and preview. Um, and so it's time for a trademark party. I kind of reiterate some stuff. And um, I need to fix this so that it plays automatically. Let me fix that. Um, but anyway, I want the clients to see themselves like this is this is another client right but this is just an example but i want to be able to celebrate with them that they have a successful trademark and so seeing this on the form they can say oh, okay this is what she's trying to accomplish right and so this is where we say share details of your mailing address i want to make sure i have their mailing address on hand uh beforehand so that when it's time when we do get the certificate you know, we have the latest address, we can create the mailing label, we can send it off, you know, we don't have to keep worrying about this. And then I'm inviting them to upload their image, provide your image below. What image do they want to use on their celebratory trademark graphic? And so I use a Dubsado form for that. Next thing that I want to do is automate that once this form is completed, a card is automatically created on my virtual assistant's Trello board. And she knows exactly that she needs to go into Canva and she needs to create the actual celebratory graphic and make it into a GIF, you know? So um, that's the next thing that I'm doing. So um, what questions do y'all have for me? And that was like not even the half, but um, <laughs> salute to how much do you customize your workflows for clients? I'm still trying to find the balance between giving a personal wow factor experience to the client but still be efficient and automated. I don't customize them that much at all, um, mainly because it's very difficult to. Um, so all the personal touches, everybody gets that same experience. So for me, I was thinking, how can I write emails or have communication with a client where they feel like they're the only one? Like right now, I look, we have like, I file praise the Lord, 370 trademarks in a little over three and a half years. And, but everybody feels like I'm just speaking to them. So when you write your emails, make sure that it seems as if you're just speaking one-on-one -on -one to them intimately, right? Um, and using the, that type of terminology to make them feel that way. And then knowing your ideal client. I know my ideal client. My ideal client is they're mostly black women. And in, that, in this particular space, at least when I started, and even now, there are just not a lot of attorneys who serve Black women. They're not. Of all the attorneys in the United States, only 5% are Black. And then of that 5%, how many of us practice intellectual property law? Very, very small amount, right? And so I knew, well, I'm going to make sure that I am going to provide culturally relevant legal representation to this underserved and underpopulated group. And that is infused throughout the customer process and the cycle, not just in my social media marketing um, and my email marketing, but also in the process in which I'm delivering it to them. And so I feel like when you're saying, well, how can you add the personal touch? I think the personal touch should be a kind of a 
a brand wide thing that you do, not just within the systems. In terms of customization, that is where unique specific workflows come into place. Each person, if you find in the trick, here's the key, you know, you need to make a workflow if you have to take the same steps every time for each client for a certain um, certain like um, for certain types of services. There might be some deviations. Not every single trademark is going to get an office action. Right. Not every single trademark needs a consent form. But large by large, they're all going to follow a very similar path. If you find that you keep seeing that in any of your services, you need to create some type of automation. And I mean, the customization, the personalization is where you can embed this code from Dubsado and it says, hey, first name, and it'll automatically populate your client's first name. Uh, yeah, I mean, and here's the thing, guys. We don't have a lot of time. <laughs> it is hard being solopreneurs, going from solopreneur to CEO. It's very difficult. So if we can use our systems to serve us by requesting information from the client, my clients always tell me, Takori, you made it so easy. This process was so easy. Uh, and I, I've gotten clients that way where one girl, one young lady was saying, you know, I spoke with another attorney and you are more expensive than her. But how you explain your process, how um, you let me know exactly what's going on. You just you just crushed her. You just knocked her out the water. Then they get into this beautiful back end experience. They're like, oh, my gosh, this is great. And my client is almost it's basically like concierge legal services, essentially. Uh, <laughs> Bianca said, I need a part two or for you to teach a half day master class on how to use those side. Of, oh, my goodness. Oh, good. I'm happy, um, Camilla, that you've gotten a ton of ideas, ton of ideas. You're welcome. Timmy, yes, I've essentially, uh, uh, I know my idol clients so well, I've crafted a process that feels personalized. Yes, I would definitely say so. I know what they think. I know what they eat. I know what they like to watch on TV. I, I know what makes them them tick. I know what they're passionate about. Most of my clients, and I can tell you right now, most of my clients are black women between the ages of uh, 25 and maybe 38. Um, many of them are married or they have, um, or if they're not married, they have two children, one to two children. Um, they're very, they're faith-based women, um, or they believe in something, a higher power, something other than themselves, something greater than themselves. Um, they, um, you know, they, they are very passionate about, uh, relationships, passionate about community, passionate about, um, Black Lives Mattering. They're passionate about, uh, social impact. They're passionate about what affects their particular community and how society affects that as a whole. They're also passionate about and they want to understand how can they preserve and protect their legacy and build generational wealth. Everybody's business is a weapon. And you have to figure out what is your law firm going to be used, uh, you know, as a sword and a shield against. And so for me, I know my business is a weapon in that regard where I'm empowering creators of color, specifically black and brown creatives of color who've often not been able to access quality intellectual property legal services or the intellectual property system in this country has not made it accessible to them to protect their brands. So I'm using that. My business is a weapon to smite that giant, so to speak. But I'm not going to be able to really fulfill my purpose and do all that I'm called to do if my systems are trash, <laughs> if, because my systems really are allowing me to scale, I'm able to hire more people and they can really seamlessly flow into this process because the standard operating procedures are lined out because we have workflows in Dubsado that really, you saw that workflow in Trello, my workflows in Dubsado kind of match that. And what I found was, hey, if we are going to step outside of Dubsado and do legal work, um, maybe doing the trademark searches, we don't need to kind of knock that off in a checklist in Dubsado, you can, but we use we use Trello for that. But when it comes to client communication, when it comes to, did a client get this form? Did you update this? Anything that's happening in terms of client communication, that's what we use Dubsado for. Uh, 